Hi everyone, I'm Steve and this is the College Support Network. In the past, I've worked in high schools as a college advisor and I also have experiences working in college financial aid, academic advising, as well as admissions. I'm really passionate about college access and I know applying to colleges can be really confusing as well as really frustrating. That's why I'm here to provide you all with the most accurate and quality information so you can reach your college goals. Welcome to the second portion of the coalition application walkthrough where I'll be walking you through the entire coalition application process. In the last video, I went over things such as tips before you start your coalition application, how to create your account, and then I went over specific sessions such as the contacts, the locker, as well as the college list. I think it was a really great video that pretty much walked you through the three of the four main sections in the coalition application. So if you haven't done so yet, I really do recommend you all to watch it. For today's video, I'll be focusing on the last main section of the coalition application, and that's a general profile. In general, the profile section will ask for things such as more information to learn about who you are as a student, high school information and coursework, college information and coursework, official standardized testing scores, honors, awards, and distinctions, academic interests, activities or experiences, and lastly, the coalition application essay. And then to finish off with the video, I just want to go over some brief tips I have for you all and some general information about how to submit your application. But as always, before we start, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I know I say it all the time, but it really does help the channel out. With all that being said, let's get started. So like I said already, the profile section does have a lot of subsections within it. And at the top of each page, you will be able to see the list of colleges from the list that you selected that requires that specific subsection. This is a really great way for you to understand and see which colleges require which subsections. However, with that being said, I do really suggest you all to just complete the entire general profile anyway. And that just means completing every single subsection that you see here. And the reason for this is because you don't really know exactly every single college that you're going to be applying to yet. And because of this, you won't know every single subsection that's going to be needed. When you first click on your profile, you will be asked to provide personal information about yourself. Most notably, you will be asked about your name, date of birth, email address, sex, social security, and military status. On top of this, you'll also be asked your enrollment status if you haven't answered it already. And basically, your enrollment status just means what you're currently doing right now for school. For the majority of you, you will be applying to colleges when you're still in high school, so just make sure to click the correct answer or the correct response. In this section, you will also be asked to provide information about when you will graduate from high school and if you haven't done so already, when you plan to start college. Lastly, you'll also be asked if you intend on applying to financial aid as well. From here, you will be asked whether you have been impacted by natural disasters and emergencies such as COVID-19. You're going to be able to see a list of options available for you to choose from and then you also have the option to add additional information if needed. I really do advise you all to take advantage of this section here and be as honest and truthful as possible when you're answering it. Providing more information about your background or just things that have affected you will really help the colleges learn more about who you are as a person as well as your living experiences. Lastly, you will also be asked if you participated in a community-based organization or CBO. And in its simplest terms, it's an organization or program that helps students with college-related things such as college applications and financial aid. If you feel like you've been helped by a CBO or if you participated in a CBO in the past, you can go ahead and click on the search bar and then type in the name of the organization that you believe you participated in. From there, you should be able to see a list of CBOs and then you'll just click on the correct one. Once you've selected a CBO, you will have to provide a little bit more information such as your CBO advisor full name as well as their email address. The next subsection in the profile section was specifically asked about your contact information. The questions here are pretty self-explanatory. They'll ask for things such as your phone number, mailing address, as well as your permanent address. My main tip here is just to provide information as closely as possible to any government or school documents that you have already. So when inputting your permanent address, make sure that it's exactly as it shows up on your high school transcripts or your high school reports. So then the schools that you're applying to can match your profile up a little bit quicker. For example, if your address is Avenue and on your school reports and on your government papers, you spell it out completely A-V-E-N-U-E, -E, but then in your college application, you only put A-V-E, that might make a difference. Every single school is going to look at it differently. So the best way you could go about it is just to put it exactly as it does on your school and government reports. 
The next two subsections in the profile section will talk about your demographics and your citizenship information. For these two subsections, I do recommend you all to read the questions very slowly and take your time. I think the demographic section is very straightforward, but I recommend students to have their parents and legal guardians with them when they fill out the citizenship section. In this section, you will be asked if you are a U.S. citizen, a U.S. national, permanent resident, or U.S. dual citizen. Then you will also be asked about your birthplace. I know every single student situation is going to be a little bit different. Some of you may know this answer on the top of your head and some of you may not. So like I said, I do really recommend you to contact your parents or legal guardians and have them with you when you're filling out this section. The last subsection in the profile section that doesn't specifically ask about your activities or your academics is going to be about the family information. In this subsection, you will be asked to provide information about those in your household and then who lives with you permanently. If you put down that you live with a parent or guardian and then siblings as well, you will need to provide specific information about each of them such as their name, relationship to you, age, gender, contact information, highest level of education, occupation and position, place of work, and lastly, birth country or birthplace. Like some of the other subsections before it, this section is pretty straightforward as well. However, if you need specific answers from your siblings or your parents about some of the questions that are being asked, I really recommend you all to contact them as soon as possible or maybe even have them sitting next to you as you're filling it out. The remaining subsections in the profile section are mainly going to ask about your academics and your awards, as well as any honors or distinctions that you may have. The remaining subsections are really important because they are likely what's going to determine whether you're going to be a good match and fit for the colleges that you selected. So for the rest of the profile section, I really do recommend you all to have any official or unofficial test scores, transcripts, or any other piece of information that can help you fill out the profile. The next three subsections will focus on high school information, 9 through 11th grade coursework as well as 12th grade coursework. So like I said, it's probably a good idea to have any official or unofficial high school transcripts available with you right now. The first thing you will need to do is provide information about all high schools you've attended and indicate which high school you will be graduating from. To add high schools to your profile, the process is very simple. You will first select the state for the high school that you attended and then from there you can locate your school by typing in the school name, city, or SEEB code. Once you're done adding your high school, you will then need to input dates that you attended the academic schedule such as full year, semester, trimester, quarter, and so on. And lastly, you will need to add the grading scale such as letter, number, percentage, or so on. And then lastly, once you're done adding your high school, you will then need to provide information about the high school that you're going to graduate from or the high school that you're getting your diploma from. If you've only been to one high school and you're going to graduate from that high school, the process is going to be pretty easy for you. You'll just select that high school. The next subsection is going to ask about your 9th through 11th grade coursework. And for this subsection, it's really important to remember that you need to include every single course that you took in high school that counted towards graduation. Unlike the UCs and the CSUs that require the ADG requirements, private schools work a little bit differently and they just want to see every single school that you use to graduate. For this section, like I said, please have your transcripts out and input courses onto the application exactly as it shows up on your transcripts. Similar to adding high schools, the process to add classes is actually really simple as well. You will first click on the academic grade level you want to add classes for and then you'll need to provide specific information for each class such as the type of class which usually just means if it was AP, IB, honors or regular, then you'll need to add information such as subject area, whether you earned college credit or not, the grading scale, the class schedule, how the grade was reported on your transcripts, the grade that you received, and then what part of the academic year you took it. And this usually just means if you took it during the full year, the fall semester, quarter semester, whatever it may be, or the summer. After you're done filling out information for one class, you could go ahead and click on add additional courses and then fill out more courses for the academic grade level. For example, if the first class that you added was in 9th grade, you just want to go ahead and finish all your classes in 9th grade and input all the classes that you took that year for graduation. And then to complete this section, you will just need to repeat the process over and over again for every single academic grade level. For the 9th through 11th grade subsection, I do have a couple notes and tips for you all. The first is to remember that you need to add every single course that you took towards graduation. So if you took PE, if you took health or anything else, make sure to add that here. Like I said, it's different from the UCs and CSUs that don't require it. The second tip is to identify or indicate every single class that you took towards college level credit. This doesn't mean AP or IB or any honors level courses. It actually means courses that you took at a college that earns you credit for both high school as well as college. 
And my very last tip for you all is that if you took any middle school classes that counted towards your high school graduation, I know some students take geometry or math or Spanish in middle school and actually could use that for high school graduation. If you find yourself in this situation, go ahead and add these classes to your ninth grade year. You actually can't add any middle schools to your academic profile. So the next best way that coalition has for you is to actually add them to your ninth grade level courses. In the next subsection, you'll be asked to provide any information about your 12th grade courses. Honestly, this is going to be very similar to what you filled out in the 9th through 11th grade courses, but obviously is going to be specifically about 12th grade. And as you could probably gather, the process to add your courses to your 12th grade is going to be very similar to the 9th through 11th grade subsection that you just completed. The main difference here is that you probably won't be able to add any grades to any of the courses that you add. And the reason for that is because a lot of the courses that you're taking in 12th grade, you're taking right now. So because of this, grades probably aren't available for you yet, right? If you do find yourself in the situation where you can't provide any grades yet, go ahead and click on the drop down list on the grades option and then you'll be able to see two options at the top. Top. The first is going to be in progress and the second is going to be not started. Depending on your situation, you'll select from one of these two options. If you're currently taking the class, you'll probably put in progress. And if you plan on taking the class in the next semester, you'll just go ahead and click on not started. Once you're done inputting information about high school information as well as high school coursework, you'll then move on to the next two subsections which are very similar and they'll focus on college information and college coursework. In general, these sections will be very similar to your high school subsections that you just completed. You will first be asked if you are taking college level courses or earn college level credit. If you select no, you will be able to skip this subsection and then move on to the next subsection. However, if you do select yes, you will need to provide information such as are you currently attending or taking college level courses? How many college level courses or credits have you received? And lastly, how many college level credits you earned after high school? Once you're done providing all this information, like I said already, the subsection is going to look very similar to before. You would need to add all colleges that you've attended in the past by inputting the school name or the city where your college is located. Once you selected the college, you would then need to provide information such as dates attended and if you earned a degree or not. For the majority of students, you probably haven't earned a degree yet. This is usually for students that are transferring from after completing community college level coursework. Once you're done adding one college, you will simply need to add any more colleges that you attended if applicable. Once you are done adding your colleges, you can go ahead and start providing information about the college level credit or college level courses that you took while you were still in high school. For this section, it's really important to know that some colleges actually won't require you to submit information here at all. They'll actually prefer you to submit any official transcripts if you do have them. Also for this subsection, please remember that you only need to select classes that specifically gave you college level credit only. So you shouldn't be adding any dual credit courses here. And if you're unsure, dual credit just means that you receive both high school credit as well as college level credit for it. If you do have dual credit courses to provide, remember that you input that information in your 9th to 12th grade high school coursework. To add classes to your college level coursework, you will need to answer questions such as schedule system or academic calendar, academic year, term, subject, course name, course number, credit and hours, and finally the grade that you received for it unless you are still currently enrolled in it. Once you're done adding at least one class, you could go ahead and add any more courses that you took specifically to give you college level credit. And as always, I really do advise you to have any transcripts out with you either electronically or physically to help you fill out this information as accurate and as efficiently as possible. The next three academic subsections in the profile section are going to specifically focus on any standardized testing scores that you want to report. This includes things such as the SAT, ACT, SAT subject test, IB test, English proficiency test, and a couple more. For these subsections, you will first be asked if you have any scores for various tests that you want to report. And once you click yes, you will typically be asked questions such as what was the exam, how many times you took it, when you took it, the highest score you received, and if you plan on taking another exam in the future. I don't want to go into too much detail about every single subsection about standardized testing just because every school that you apply to is going to be a little bit different. Some are going to be required an SAT or ACT, some want to see SAT subject tests, some want to see AP scores, and so on. So it's really important for you all to really take the responsibility upon yourself, understand what your colleges require and need of you, and then from there, gather that information and input it into these subsections. With that being said though, I do have some general tips for you all. 
The first is, as always, make sure to have any official or unofficial test scores with you available when you're filling out your application. For this, I usually recommend students to visit the exact testing agency or testing center website and then find the information there. So that could either be College Board, ETS, the ACT, or wherever it may be. The next step is something I already mentioned, but it's something I really recommend you all to do, and that's just really stay up to date about all the testing requirements for every single campus that you're applying to. For example, if you're an international student, you'll have to provide things such as English proficiency exams. And the last step is just to remember that these test scores are going to be self-reported. That means that these aren't going to actually be your official test scores. You'll be sending official test scores later to individual colleges that you're applying to, so make sure to stay on top of that as well. The very next subsection in the profile section is going to specifically ask about your eligibility for a fee waiver. Please remember that every single college that you apply to will have different requirements or eligibility for a fee waiver. However, with that being said, the coalition app does give you a couple of different options to select from to see if you may be eligible or not. Once you click on one of these options, you will be able to see a list of colleges that offer a fee waiver for it. I really do advise you all to be truthful and as honest as possible in this section. And then on top of that, just make sure to read every single option slowly and make sure that it's something that you actually are eligible for. The next couple of subsections are going to focus on honors, distinctions, and awards, as well as any academic interests and activities that you participated in in high school. These subsections are really a space for colleges to learn more about who you are as a person outside of the classroom and to get more information about your personality. For honors and awards, you will have the chance to provide five honors and distinctions in order of importance to you. For this section, I really do advise you all to be as selective as possible. You're only given five distinctions or honors to choose from, so make sure that you only choose the ones that are most meaningful to you. Similarly, another tip I have for you all is just to not add honors and distinctions to fluff up your application. So don't just add things because you want your application to stand out. The honor can be in any area in your life such as music, sports, academics, and so on. And it can also be as big or small as you want it to be. As long as it's something that you feel like is meaningful or impactful to you. For this section, you will need to add the name of the honor or distinction and then what level it was such as local, regional, state, or national. And then lastly, you will need to input information about the grade year that you received it. For the next subsection, which is academic interest, you have to provide information such as subjects that you enjoy, subjects that you want to learn more about, and then subjects that are most interesting to you. To start, all you really need to do is click on the drop down menu list and then select from whichever is most interesting to you. For this, please remember to be as honest as possible. Colleges aren't looking for a specific answer here. They just really want to learn a little bit more about you and then some of the interests that you have. Also, please remember here that you aren't actually choosing a specific major yet. If you watch the first video of the application walkthrough series, you'll learn that the college section is actually where you'll be providing information about your major of interest. The next subsection in the profile section is going to ask specifically about your activities and experiences. Like I mentioned already, this section is really meant for the schools to learn more about what you're doing outside of the classroom, then just learn more about what interests you're taking on right now. This can really be any activity that you're doing such as clubs, sports, music, or maybe even family obligations if you are doing that. In this section, you have the option to add up to 8 activities or experiences, but just like the honors and awards subsection, I really do suggest you all to focus on only the things that are meaningful to you and has personal significance to you. To add activities or experiences, you will need to select from the correct category that it belongs to and then provide information such as activity name, a brief description, the correct grade levels, if you're currently participating in it, how much time you actually spend doing it, if you have any honors and distinctions for it, and lastly, if you have a leadership role for it. In general, I think all of the questions here are pretty straightforward and easy to answer. However, I do have some notes for you. The first is for the brief description. I really advise students to talk about things such as their responsibilities or the things they actually did. Also, another thing that you could talk about is just your overall impact. So what exactly did you do that was important and why are you even adding this activity at all? Another thing you could talk about is why this activity or experience is meaningful or important to you. Next, specifically for the questions to ask about how much time you spend doing it, you'll be asked things such as how many hours within the week that you spend working on it or how many weeks out of the year that you spend working on your your project or your activity. For this, it's really hard for you all to be exact just because sometimes you'll be talking about things that you did freshman year or maybe sophomore year. The application really isn't expecting a specific or exact answer here. So for this, I really advise you all just to estimate to the best of your ability. 
And the very last subsection in the profile section is going to be about your coalition essay. To prevent this video from being way too long, I actually won't be going into too much detail here. And as I mentioned before in the common application walkthrough video series, I'll actually be doing a dedicated video about how to write college essays such as the common app essay, coalition essay, PIQs and so many more. So please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I actually think that video is going to be coming out next week. So like I said, subscribe if you haven't done so already. With that being said, I do want to provide some general information and tips for you all about the coalition essay. First is that there are only four general essay prompts and you only need to choose one to answer and write an essay for. You can also submit your own essay topic as well, which is honestly pretty cool. I don't know many other college applications that will allow students to do that. The next tip I have for you all is that even though there isn't a perfect length for your essay, the coalition application does actually recommend students to have their essays roughly between 500 to 650 words. If you do have under 500 words for your essay, this probably won't deny you outright. However, it's probably best to write a little bit more if you can. The next tip I have for you all is to remember that there is no such thing as the best essay prompt. Every single essay prompt here is weighed exactly the same, so I really advise you all to just select the one that you feel most confident and most comfortable answering. And the very last coalition essay tip I have for you all is to remember that there is no right answer. The coalition application is just looking to see how you're able to write concisely as well as clearly. It's also an opportunity for them to learn more about who you are as a person and then learn more about your personality. With that being said, although there isn't a right right answer, there is definitely a right way to write your answer. So for this, I really do recommend you all to subscribe and watch my next video about how to write your college essays. Alright y'all, so that finishes up the entire general profile section. Now I want to talk briefly about what you need to do before you submit your applications. To submit your application, you have to first complete all the requirements necessary for every single college campus that you're applying to. Additionally, before you submit, I really do recommend you all to review the entire application in its entirety before you submit. And this is just an opportunity for you to make sure everything that you put down is accurate to the best of your knowledge. On top of this, I do recommend you to have any counselors, teachers, parents, guardians, friends, or anyone else that you trust to look over your application as well. I would even advise you to ask them to look over your application more than once just because applying to college is getting harder and harder every single year. So you want to at least make sure that all the information you're putting down is as accurate as possible. If you and those you trust have looked over your application multiple times, you could now visit the specific application for every individual campus that you're applying to and submit your application. At the bottom of the page for the specific campuses that you're applying for, you'll see an option that says payment. And this payment option should be unlocked if all your requirements have been completed. In this section, you will be able to see if you were given a fee waiver or not. If you were given a fee waiver for your college applications, you'll be able to submit your application here. However, for students without a fee waiver, you will have to go ahead and submit submit payment information and then from there you'll be able to submit your application. And with that, now you're done. You've just gone ahead and completed your first coalition application for your college app. Not too bad, right? That's all the information I have for you for today. Before I let you go though, like always, I do have a couple questions for you all. The very first question is, from what you've seen, do you prefer using the common application or the coalition application? And my second question is what part of the coalition app is the hardest for you to answer or the hardest part for you to fill out? It could be either something from the last video or this video. Go ahead and leave all your answers in the comments below. And with all that being said, that's all I have for the second portion of the coalition application walkthrough series. Like I said before, if you haven't watched the first video yet, I really do recommend you all to watch that. For now, thank you so much for spending some time with me today learning about college. I think that's super awesome. As always, thumbs if you learned and subs if you loved. Take care, y'all.